All right. Now we look at pericardial constriction. The most important aspect of pericardial constriction is that there is a rigid pericardium that is over the heart. So this rigid pericardium cause dissociation of the intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure. It no longer follow each other like in normal respiration. All right. So as the intrathoracic pressure go up in expiration, the intracardiac pressure will stay, stay the same. Therefore, the gradient will go up. As the intrathoracic pressure go down on inspiration, the intracardiac pressure doesn't change. So the gradient will come down. Let's look at the right heart. When you inspire, nothing will happen in the intracardiac because of the dissociation of intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure. So, the extrathoracic and intracardiac on the right side doesn't change with respiratory cycle. So, you can see the difference. In normal respiration, it's the right changes that is driving the left side changes. However, in constrictive pericarditis, it's the left side that driving the right side changes. So, let's look on the left side here. On inspiration, the intrathoracic pressure become negative. The intracardiac pressure doesn't change. So, the gradient become negative. So, there is less flow here. When there is less flow here, the septum is pulled towards this side. So, there is more flow here. What about on expiration? On expiration, the intrathoracic pressure go up. But the intracardiac pressure doesn't change. Now, the gradient will go up. As the gradient go up, the flow here go up and push the septum towards the right side. And you can see there is less flow on the right side. Therefore, you see the changes is the same with normal respiration and constriction. The as the flow on the right side increase on inspiration, the flow on the left side decrease. As the flow on the right side decrease on expiration, the flow on the left side increase. So the changes now is actually caused by the changes in gradient on the left side. However, in this situation, we can see a more pronounced septal shift. So when you expire, more flow towards here and the septum is actually pushed towards the right side. When you inspire, there is less flow here and the septum is actually pulled here on inspiration. So on expiration, the septum go there. On inspiration, it go back here. Expiration go there and inspiration go back there. That is what we call septal shift in constrictive pericarditis. Why in this situation we see septal shift as compared to normal respiration? It's because of this rigid pericardium. The ventricle cannot expand, so the septum have no, no other choice but to move towards to the left and to the right side as compared to normal respiration. So see the difference. In normal respiration, the right side that is changes causing the changes on the left side. In constriction, the left side that is changes, causing the changes on the right side. In constriction, the septum movement is pronounced because the heart cannot expand laterally because of the rigid pericardium. In normal respiration, we cannot see the septum move perceptibly because the ventricle actually can expand and can contract. So we'll go into part three.